Place bricks or blocks around front tires for safety. Loosen lug nuts on tire before jacking up car. Jack up car to desired level. Finish taking off lug nuts and remove tire. Now inspect the brakes. I felt the back of the rotor and it was rough. Here's a picture of it. As you can see, the rotor has been damaged. When you work on brakes, you want to remove the cap to the brake fluid reservoir before you start messing with the calipers. Why should you do this? To relieve pressure on the system. You don't want to blow a brake line, do you? As you can see, I put a brick under the area that I'm working on. I do this for safety, and also it gives the caliper a place to rest when I take it off. I'm using a 3 8 ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket. I place two extensions together totaling 9 inches. Here are what the bolts look like that hold on the caliper. They are 14 millimeter and are on very tight. I ended up using a 3 8 breaker bar to get the caliper bolts loose. Now that I took the caliper bolts off, I set the caliper on the brick. I do this so I don't put extra pressure on the brake lines. I take a large ratchet screwdriver to loosen the one screw on the rotor. I then attempt to take the rotor off. I use a hammer to loosen the rotor. Since I'm replacing the rotor, I don't care about damaging it since it's already damaged. After removing the rotor, I now remove the old brake pads. Before removing them, I make a mental note or take a picture of how the old brake pads are positioned. To get to the caliper piston, you need to take the caliper apart. I use a small crescent wrench to loosen the bolts. Here's an up-close picture of the caliper bolt. After taking the caliper apart, you will have access to the caliper piston. Take your caliper piston tool and turn to the right to tighten it. It turns slow because you are compressing the brake fluid back through the system. I suggest you buy a brake caliper piston tool kit like the one shown in the picture. This will make this job much easier. I use the tool labeled F. Here's an up close picture of the caliper piston I was working on. After you turn the caliper piston and compress it, then you want to put your caliper back together. Place your new brake pads into the caliper. I like to use a flathead screwdriver when installing new brake pads into the caliper. After you correctly position your new brake pads, then install your new rotor. Make sure you line up the screw holes when installing. After putting on the brand new rotor, you should be able to place the caliper over the rotor. Now you want to get the 14 millimeter bolt started on the caliper. I ended up using the breaker bar to tighten the bolts that hold on the caliper. After tightening the caliper and inspecting the work, I placed the tire back on. This side of the car is complete. When doing brake pads and rotors, you always want to duplicate your work on the other side of the same axle. Now I'm doing the other back wheel. 
On this wheel, I loosen the bolts that hold the caliper together first. Then I used a breaker bar again to loosen the 14 millimeter bolts. After taking off the caliper, I loosen the rotor screw. The rotor is stuck, so I used a hammer to get the rotor off. A sledgehammer is better for this job, but I managed with a small hammer. I took the caliper apart and used my caliper tool. You can see that it takes some effort to turn the caliper piston. Just turn it to the right and it should turn slowly for you. This is what it looks like after you get done tightening it. You don't need to turn it too far. It's now a good time to install your new brake pads on the caliper. If you install them now, you will find it is easier than installing them after you put the caliper back together. After you install the brake pads and line them up, then put the caliper back together. You can hand tighten the bolts for now and use the wrench later to finish the job. Make sure your screw holes line up when putting on the new rotors. After installing, you may want to spin it. Sometimes when you are placing the caliper back onto the rotor, you need to move the new brake pads apart. I like to use a flat head screwdriver for this task. Next, you want to install the 14 millimeter bolts for the rotor. After using my breaker bar to tighten up the bolts that hold the caliper in place, I use my crescent wrench to finish tightening the caliper bolts. After I put my tire back on and lower the jack, I go to the brake fluid reservoir and place the cap back on. Then I go start the car and pump the brake pedal. If everything seems good, I take it for a drive around the block. You don't need to bleed your brakes for this job. The brake fluid is in a closed system. After you get done with your test drive, you will know if something does not seem right. I hope this video helped you out.